Okay, Michael, what we're going to do is a bit of a screencast uh, that actually explains, or at least explains how I would uh, create an HDR image. I, I know you asked the question, how do you do it? But uh, we're going to do it in record time. So what we've got here is uh, three images, yeah? Yep. This is uh, the first one here is the uh, standard automatic exposure. Yes. Uh, one we've got over the uh, in the middle is uh, two stops underexposed. Yes. And then on the right is the third one, which is two stops overexposed. So they're shot auto bracketing, bracketing right on the 5D. Now, when you take those with your camera, your camera takes the middle one first and then the other two. No, is this that one, right? this one first, and then the it goes under and then over. Then over, okay. Okay, so what we need to do is just leave them alone, just leave them as uh, raw. We're going to export uh, some some versions. So in Aperture we're using here on the Mac, we're going to export uh, them as 16-bit TIFF originals uh, for processing later. So while it's doing that, we go down to uh, <coughs> Photomatics. We op open Photomatics. Okay. We're waiting for them to export out of Aperture, and that doesn't take a second on the Mac Pro. Well, a couple of seconds. And in Photomatics uh, menu, we choose from HDR, Generate. Generate oh. allows us to browse those and find in that folder that we just exported to, those three TIFFs. We so this this just exports them to a folder? <coughs> yep, just export them out of Aperture as TIFFs. Doesn't send them anywhere else, nope. just to a folder? Just to a folder. Then we open those three images with Photomatics. Right. Now I usually click off align sources because I'm using a tripod and I don't attempt to reduce ghosting ar artifacts. You can right. probably a attempt that later if you get any problems. But initially, just, you know, don't let it do anything more than it needs to for the, for the moment, uh, especially if you've got a tripod that you're working with. Now, what this is doing now, uh, Photomatics is uh, uh, combining those three images into an HDR image. or a, in, in fact, it's a .HDR file, which Photoshop can open and Photomatics can open. <coughs> so while we're waiting that for that to work, here we go. That's done. That's done. And what what it is is it's a pretty ugly looking thing. But as we move our cursor over the image, we'll see that it's actually on the fly creating or showing as what detail is available in those little areas. So right. as we move around, you can see where it's really bright in the screen. You can see there's actually detail. So what we need to do is from the HDR menu choose HDR tone mapping. Now in a tone mapping sense, we'll, we'll go back to default. I should have done that first, but that's basically where you want to start. You want to start with a def default setting. And you'll see here we're, we're choosing the, up, up here in the top left, we're choosing Details Enhancer uh, and 16-bit as our output. Uh, now what we want to do first is probably f tweak from the Tone menu uh, the Gamma setting. And you'll notice it doesn't do it instantly, but it, there is a delay as it reprocesses. Yes. And what you're trying to do is just tweak around between luminosity, white point, and gamma to get your tonal values about right. About right. Uh, now I, I tend to muck around with this a fair bit until I get it in a sort of a in a black and white sense. I get it about right. Now that that's pretty close. Then I might go to uh, the color tab and I might just increase the temperature a bit, the color temperature, just to warm it up a little bit because yeah. after all it is a sunset. And I would probably leave the default the saturation highlights, saturation shadows. I'd probably leave them about the same. Um, I might actually uh, go up here while I'm adjusting the uh, temperature and I'll increase the color saturation a tad. Uh, there you go, that's just increased it a little bit and I might, yeah, so I might leave that alone. Then I'll go into what they call micro contrast and what that does is increase the contrast within the tonal range and I'll can fiddle with that a little bit. Uh, there it is increased, I don't want that too much, a bit too much. Uh, we're probably right around there. Uh, and you can also smooth the highlights out. If, you, if I show you what it does, it flattens all, you see what it does? Yeah. It wrecks all the highlights, it smooths yeah. the highlights. So I actually don't do a lot of that on, on this sort of stuff anyway. But that, that's sort of close, but not, not quite. I, I think actually uh, what I've got to do is um, just, just uh, increase the luminosity of the entire thing. So I might just bump that up to... Mm. Now that doesn't do a lot, the luminosity, does it? it yeah, no, it just uh, it basically it's an exposure setting overall. So it's yeah, taking yeah. the whole thing and bumping it up a little bit. Now that... To yeah. me, that doesn't look too bad. That's the fill effect. Well, that's pretty close to HDR, but but fairly conservative HDR. You could go a lot further, but, but yeah. really it still looks like a sunset. It's just got detail in the foreground. So we're going to apply that uh, mix, and uh, we're going, going to uh, then show you what we do next. And this is the tricky part, or at least the part that I use as my method or workflow. 
All it does is process that file and create an HDR image, or at least a 16-bit, I think a 16-bit HDR image. Anyway, we'll see what that looks like. One moment while it processes. I think I've got somebody over there uh, behind me making a noise. And as you see, it opens up. And, it, and it, when it opens up, you wouldn't get too worried about how furry it looks. It does look a bit gummy. And I think it's got to do with the way Photomatix handles um, color management. So well, anyway, I'll just save that. Mm. So you, you've got to go save as and save it. Well, well uh, I see with it. It's sort of not... It's not exactly the same as what when you're adjusting it no. on the thing. When it's the final thing, isn't quite the same as I that. I think this viewer is not a. It's not. It's not really mapped to the to the Max color management system. Yeah. But it, the viewer tends to be closer. So what I do is save it as that tone map, in the map mapped image. I go back into Aperture, and I'll import that 16-bit file. Ah. Uh, right. Right. That's where it gets tricky. I, I've got to navigate to that file on the desktop. Uh, I can see it there, tone mapped. I think it's that one. I just check the that it is the one I want, and it is. I'll import the one image, and it will go into the same folder that I've got my originals in. And now I can select all four, and it shows you the uh, standard exposure, the underexposed, uh, the overexposed, and the tone mapped image. So if we just go now to the tone mapped image, sorry about that. We can then fiddle around and tweak it just a tad more and maybe go to the levels, maybe up the black a little bit, maybe change the... This is this is just getting it a little bit more closer to where you want it. Mm. And you might be happy with that. And this one, of course, has got a... Um, if you can see here, a, uh, a horizon line that's not too flash. So at that point, I would probably go into Aperture and fix that horizon or not. But in this case, and let's just do it. Where are you doing that? Oh, that's in the in the aperture uh, oh, horizon okay, setting. Okay, yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, I see it's it. Probably not the best way to do it, but look, yeah. it's quicker than having to go into Photoshop. So, yep. bearing in mind, we haven't touched Photoshop here. The other thing we can do with this, just for the heck of it, we can possibly uh, have it have a bit of a look and see what's going on in the detail. Oh, I love that loop. And the loop shows that it's done a pretty good job of sticking all those files together. There's not a lot of banding. We don't need to align anything too much, and we probably don't need to remove ghosting in the waves they, they look okay so we'll go with that we might just sharpen it up uh, a little bit because it hasn't been sharpened at all in, in camera this uh, it hasn't been sharpened anyway this is the only time it's been sharpened so uh, from there Michael if we're happy with that and I uh, might just oh, look I could fiddle with a few things but for the purpose of this demonstration we don't need to but you could mess around with this a bit more in, in aperture I'm just gonna increase the density of the, the yellows a bit because I like that but from there Michael we want to go to Flickr and Photo Geek so we go export, and we're right. using our plugin for Aperture. That's the Flickr export plugin, and all we do is uh, it logs into the server at Flickr <laughs> with our details. Uh, we we put a title in. Uh, once we've got a title there, we call that split point. Oh, that's the name of the place. That's the name of the place. We yeah. put a tag in there, call it HDR and maybe Photomatics. And we click here down the bottom as an add to pool. We're going to add to the Photo Geek pool. Uh, and then we'll just export. Uh, sorry, before we do that, we'll just pick the size of the export and that'll be out of... Uh, it'll Aperture will create that. And we'll choose for our purposes. I, I usually use JPEG 1024 by 1024, so it's reasonably big. Then we just click export. That easy. It's that easy. So we've gone from uh, three original files untouched out of the camera to exporting to Flickr. And this will uh, export up to Flickr, go up to the server. We'll place it on the Photo Geek pool as well as my own. When it's done, it will open uh, the Flickr import. And you go, is that okay? Is that what you want? Yep, okay. We click all right. And it'll take us to the uh, Flickr page with that image now in Flickr. Fantastic. And there it is. Fantastic. So I'm going to leave that there. And... Uh, we're going to refer to this uh, photo, uh, what do you call it, screencast a little bit later in uh, Photo Geek, uh, episode 38, I think, Michael. Is that many? Yes. So does that answer some of the questions? It does. I've got one question. Yes. Why can't I find Sharpen when I want it? <laughs> what, in Aperture? Yes. Yeah, it's not available in the standard menu. I've been uh. trying to work out how to include it as a default part of the menu, but it's not. You just add it up there in the top right. There's a little adjustments 
uh, wheel. Okay, I can click. see that. Yeah, yeah, I think you add the plus, yeah. and you want to add one. And there's a few others there as well. The edge sharp and monochrome mixes. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there that you might want to play with. Anyway, I think that's our uh, screencast done, Michael. Good one, Phil. So we'll thank everybody for watching, and um, if you uh, if you want to uh, hear more of these, you, you might, or see more of these, you might want to go to photogeek.tv and. Uh, if you've got anything specific you want to uh, get us to show you, then uh, drop us a line. Otherwise, just have a try. And thank you, Michael. Thanks, Phil. Cheers, mate.